Do a smelling shower. Here, where are we at here? Okay. We're live. We're live, Shan. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, hey, do you want to put this stuff out? Yeah, it's a little guy with like a speaker on it, but yeah, it's cool because this one's going to be in 1080p. Who's the last guy you had on? Pardon? Who was the last person you had on? Uh, Adrian, the tattoo artist. Calgary. Right. He's really dope. <clears throat> okay. I should have picked that side because this side shows my receding hairline really bad. Huh? You want to swap? No, no, it's okay. I thought it would be funny to say. Oh, no Should I expose mine too? Yeah, yeah we're just, we have to. No hey speed. guys, we're getting old. <clears throat> oh man, <laughs> how old are you? Forty. Forty? Yeah. I thought you're. Uh, I thought you're a bit younger. I'm not. I thought you're my wife's age. She's thirty-seven. Mm, yeah. Thirty-three. You're thirty-three. But I feel like my right knee always hurts. <laughs> <laughs> right leg always hurts. Yeah, I don't know. People usually okay. think I'm younger, but maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm just immature. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because I'm still trying to be a rapper. <laughs> okay, uh, that gives me a question. Uh, you, but you're also a singer. I am also a singer. But I started just rapping. Just rapping. Uh, if you rap, 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 rap. Oh, sorry. I was just busting your sweet freestyle there. Don't worry hood, about hood, it. Hood, hood, hood. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that shit to people. Yeah, when I say I'm a rapper, they kind of always give me that look, and I just say that just to be a retard. But um, oh, if you had one, Can you just rap for me, right? Yeah. I kind of like to, but uh, if someone asks, I'm definitely down. But I usually catch myself in a situation where I'm rapping for people who don't want to hear. Me. That's right. Hey. Yeah. That's it. It's usually like one person. There's like a group of people who are like, yeah, just rap for us. And everyone else is like standing there. You start rapping and then the one guy's like, oh, sick. And then everyone else is like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> if you could, uh, okay, hold on. I have this one. I have a question here. <clears throat> if you could only rap or sing for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Cause rap. I was like, I was like, oh wow! Well, I thought you'd say sing, cause you're so good at singing, dude. Like, uh, I don't know. I, like, yeah, like I just, yeah, straight up, I was like, that's. I, I thought that would be a harder one to ask answer. Well, cause you're so you, like, you're so like fifty fifty. <laughs> you're so fifty fifty, right? Like you do all your shit. Like when I saw you live, you're playing the instruments. You did. I was like, oh, I was like this guy doesn't. He could do whatever, but I'm saying like the shit that stoked me with the singing. I was like really fucking like stoked, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, I do feel like people do like my singing more, but I like rapping more because it's just fun to me. It's I think singing is something I struggled with like starting off a lot. And so I like worked at it, but because I'm like insecure about it, I like rapping more. Yeah. Even though I might have gotten a lot better at singing it than I was when I started. It's just something that's like it's not first nature, it's like second. Yeah. I don't know if that's a saying at all, but it is now. <laughs> Do you think you have like an alter ego like I was saying earlier? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Even like when a camera's on, I think sometimes... Oh, you can't be yourself, dude. It's hard, man. <laughs> as soon as like, I know it, I'm in front of the camera, I'm just... Something like sparks a little bit and I'm like ready to talk. <laughs> that's good, dude. That's good. That's sick. Hey, kitty. 
Kyle is joining us. Uh, we, I have a one bedroom house. This house is built in 1912. It's like almost 100 years old or over. I'm sorry. That's over 100. And over 100 years old with derp. Um, and we have one bedroom, and I had to let him out because he wouldn't stop meowing. And Sometimes I forget it's not 2012. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, 2010 was like a couple years ago. And then, then I have to think. I'm like, no, that was 12 years ago. That was over a decade ago. But, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. When people say they're born in 2000 and they're 23, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> my heart just popped. Uh, it's funny, though. Oh, that's funny. That just makes us those guys that are like, man, time flies. Yeah, it's, it's... You start to be those old men that yell at clouds by the time you start talking about, oh, the good old days back in 2003. Or these kids, <laughs> these kids today. I'm not kidding. I'm saying this. I'm saying the same shit now, but I'm just trying not to be a hater. Because I'm like, well, I was that kid one day, like being crazy. Like, I was a crazy fucker. Hey, buddy. Where are, are, are you from, Calgary? No, I've lived here since 2000, but um, I moved here to go to university actually. And I'm from just outside of Edmonton in St. Albert. I lived there for 10 years. And before that, I lived in a place called Wabaska, if you've ever heard of Wabaska. Two blacks down on Wabaska. What's that off of, uh, oh, fuck, dude, it just sounds just like this movie here, <laughs> The Spy, back in the day. I just had a flashback. Sorry, I'm weird with movies, but what, what's it called? Um, the place is called Wabaska. Okay, but there's another place. Wabaska Demeray. It's like a Métis Cree community. It's like an hour and a half north, northeast of Slave Lake, if you know where Slave Lake is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. On a gravel road. This is like back in the eighties though, so is it they might have paved it since is then. Is it weird there's still a place <laughs> called Slave Lake? Yeah, yeah, maybe. And the lesser slave lake and greater slave lake. Canada's weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I was gonna say. Yeah. Where are you from Red Deer? Red Deer, yeah. 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 Dead rear. Dead rear. I love it. I've never I heard love that. But every, everybody fucking talks shit about it when I came here. They're all like, right here. I was like, dude, it's an hour away. Like, how is that much different? You know? It's like, Alberta is the fucking same. Like, how, how are so many people in this, like, little place? Like, I feel like Red Deer is, like, the central, like, hub for shit. Yeah, because everyone passes through it. Everyone knows Red Deer. Everyone's yeah. like, yeah, I've been to Red Deer. I've stayed in Red Deer. I've had some good times in Red Deer. I've had some great times in Red Deer, speaking of that, but, yeah. I miss it, I miss it, and then I don't. When I'm driving away, I'm not happy. <laughs> Straight yeah. up, yeah, 100%. Dude. 100 you really like, you, you, you can handle it for a couple of days, and then you're like, yeah, I'm good. 100%, yeah, yeah I go there because I miss it, and then I want to leave, because I don't like it. I feel the same way about St. Yeah. 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 Even though it's right next to Edmonton, like Edmonton, you know, we've had, I had some good times in Edmonton too, but like usually... Maybe because I don't live there, but whatever. I have lots of friends there. Like two of the guys that are on in my group live there still, so I go up there. The DC show. Yeah. Um, so MC Mossberg and Buttons still live up there. The two guys on the song that I released recently, actually. Demons and Liars. That's right. That's you go. I, I, I was watching. I watched <laughs> like three. I watched it three times a day. Fill in the blanks. And he's got a new one coming in. I, yeah. I don't know the name of it. I don't know the date. I'm I'm not gonna ask him if he. If he can say, he can say. Uh, if I'm going to keep that under wraps for now. Yeah. But uh, it's going to come out in like a month or so. But it's done. Did you ever skateboard? No. You got it or sports, biking, anything like that? Yeah. I didn't I didn't skateboard it, but I had one of those old school 80s ones. Like the big fat. Tanker. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to kind of do what I could on that back in like when I was a kid. But when those <laughs> sleeker, smaller style came out, I was... I had moved on at that point, so that's what, that's I, never, what I, I never learned any tricks, and I never kind of like became good at it at all. So. Do, do you know who created the the front nose? No, Brody Mullen. Oh, I was gonna guess it, but I didn't say it. Dude, if you look at the tricks that this guy released, like invented, yeah, like the ollie, put the nose on the tail, like around it, like the tail on the nose, mm -hmm. like, so you could do tricks with the other way and shit, like, just crazy, I love skateboard. Do you still skate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
you get every day type of thing? Well, not last year I didn't um, that much. I don't know if, like why I didn't because I love it so much. Like I love just cruising now too because I'm like too old to like really really skateboard. But do you have a like a regular skateboard or do you also have like a longboard? I have uh, not a longboard but a regular skateboard with longboard wheels. Mm. So I can fucking do like I can ollie up shit and get around shit and ride like I can't excuse me I can't fucking ollie on a longboard. They're fun but they're scary. Yeah. Because you gotta be like good. I've never, I've never been on longboard. I don't know if, um, so I have this video called All I've Got, and I'm dressed up like 80s dude, and I'm on one of those old school skateboards, and uh, part of the premise of this video is like I'm doing things that I'm really mediocre at, or, or like just straight up bad at, okay. and I'm like doing tricks, but they're the worst. Things. <laughs> That's amateur Dallas hour here. So. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. And like just pretending to do tricks, but I'm actually just like holding the skateboard and like kicking. <laughs> and it's just, it's meant to be really dumb, but like I had so much fun doing it. It's like one of the funnest videos I've ever shot by my, I shouldn't say by myself, because Little King, uh, if you know, yeah, and he's dope, he, he shot it for yeah. me. And, uh, he makes sick hoodies now, clothing. Yeah, he's, he's doing really cool stuff with his clothing. Um, but we had like the best, funnest day of me just being a horrible skateboarder and like uh, a bad basketball player because that was part of the thing that I'm just no good at basketball either. And I feel like if you're good at skating and you're good at basketball, you're like you got skills that like are impressive, right, dude? There's many right? skills. Right? Those are those are the kind of skills you can bust out on the street and people are like, nice. You can't like bust out a hockey playing. Like I would be stoked if you did some of that Russian shit and they're like throwing it around your hand there just like dude yeah. I saw some crazy shit. But I, I guess I'm thinking more in like the summer you kind of Oh yeah, I get what you're saying. Summer okay. premise. I guess you could yeah. do some stick handling stuff, but like I don't know. I feel like no, skateboarding and basketball bro. are more uh, hip hop related. Yeah. And I I was like because I feel like hip hop dude at heart, even though this song is straight up like eighties. <laughs> um but I was like trying to miss, like trying to look bad at these shots and I kept like hitting them and I was like, I swear I don't ever do this. <laughs> I just kept sinking these shots and he's like, you know, this, we're gonna have to get you trying to miss now because what? I kept hitting these shots. That's I'm like, I'm, I'm not good. Sorry, three pointers? No, like Dude? I was just doing it with these layups and stuff okay. and I was getting them in and I'm like, this never it's happens. Happening. Like I'm, I'm usually not this good. Not that I was like being impressive, but I was supposed to look terrible, and it wasn't happening. That's awesome, dude. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, that's my skateboarding story. Uh, but I do like, I did move to Calgary to be a speed skater at the Olympic Oh, level. That's why I moved here, Sick. to train there. Yeah? You still like doing it? Or no, I, I quit that back in like mid-2000s, like 2000, I want to say 2005, I stopped. Yeah, those are the ones like, the yeah. long ass blades. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, and uh, now I just play ultimate frisbee like a real hippie. In the fields? Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, like I play in the, actually just over uh, on the rugby nearby, or nearby here. I think you know, I can get the ultimate that. league. Yeah. Like, cause I like I want to I like bowling. I like bowling and things that are like where you have to like throw it to hit something mm -hmm. or like basketball. I kind of like like I, every time I go to the gym, I like hit. I practice on my shot because I I used to shoot like this. Yeah. And now I'm like really trying to like shoot like how you're supposed to, and yeah. it's fucking so hard. Yeah. Especially from the three. So I was like, if I can't get three fucking three uh, three free throws, I'm not moving to the three line. I'm not going there and even trying the three unless I can get yeah. three of these in a row, right? <laughs> and then I just went and I was like getting them. So every time I go to the gym, I practice on my free throw, and I like fucking pool. I like my yeah. like. Uh, yeah, like I think I would like that. It's just like it's it, it looks fucking hard. I like playing sports. Like if we're anything active, I'm like down to play games and stuff. I'm just I'm not always good at like hand-eye coordination. Excuse me. It's, I don't know why that is. It's just whatever. But then you were good at basketball all of a sudden. Oh no, just that one day. What was that your one mind? morning. <laughs> That's the latest. Yeah. It's probably because I was wearing like short shorts. It was like the. Uh, vintage basketball player short. <laughs> it was 
channeling their energy. <laughs> or you just maybe I don't know, you you know you had to put on, you're not yourself when you're on the camera. Yeah, that's right. All of a sudden you're the pro. That's right. <laughs> right. There you go. Some you just need to whip out the camera in a bad situation and you turn yeah. it good. I just swear, I'm always like this. <laughs> uh, do you like um what, what do you like more, performing or recording? Like when I when I record, man, I just love like his like experimenting with the producer just by myself and like going ham and like getting a new sound or like getting the like sound that you were working on to work or becoming something new. But then performing is like it's just like another feeling too. But it's like, yeah, it's two different uh, two different loves and two different joys, right? right? To be honest. Like when you're in the studio, usually I'm usually I'm by myself until like I pitch the idea to someone else, right? So I've already usually I've already started on something when I decide I want to collaborate myself. Sometimes on occasion I'll be like, hey, let's write a song together, but that that doesn't happen as often as me sitting by myself, like just starting to write something and like that feeling of creating something and like. The moment when you realize, oh, this is good. Do you ever get that feeling where you like, you just start doing stuff, and then you're listening back after whatever, and you're like, actually, this sounds pretty freaking cool. That feeling there, as soon as you like hit that feeling, and you're like, in go, like full time. I gotta finish this. I'm so excited to finish this. Yeah. Like I'm so excited to hear how this ends up. Like that feeling is unreal. But like when you're playing that same song on stage, it's just projected. It's like, like holy crap! Like yeah, I'm having by. such a good time. But like you can't, you can't have had that live feeling without the original written feeling, in my opinion. Yeah. Like you can you can sing other people's songs all you want. Like okay, if, if you're okay. a cover if you're a cover artist and you're singing other people's songs, that feels cool and fun too. But it's a completely different feeling when you're singing original stuff and having just as good of a time. If you could only perform or record for the rest of your life, <laughs> what would it be? Because <laughs> that, that's another way of thinking at it too. I can only record these and people can only listen to them. I can never perform them. But you can only, or only perform the songs they've never heard. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's a really because I was thinking about questions question. today, and I was like, "What am I going to ask?" And I was like, "What would I want someone to ask me?" Or, or, or I didn't even really know because, like, I, I like we kind of know each other, right? But I was like watching your shit, and I was just like trying to figure out questions. So I kind of had like weird angles to come up the questions. Like, you just want to yeah. put me on the spot, right? Me like flip the coin. You have to. <laughs> you have to. The question isn't. You can't have this awesome, smart, long answer. That's like, oh yeah, well actually, you can't have this without that. It's yes and no. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm gonna have to say record. Record? Yeah. Oh. Here's why. Okay. Because during the like two years when we couldn't perform and we were still, everyone oh. was still writing and recording oh. and having. Because of the shutdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we were all still going. Oh, we were crazy. all like They're still going. having like yeah. we are musicians. It's always great. Like got amplified. Feels so good to do it because this is what makes us feel good and like the fact that. We can still, you can still record without an audience. You kind of need an audience to perform live, otherwise it's not the same feeling. And at some point in people's lives, people stop or dwindle. Ah, another thing. thing. I know this is kind of dark. No, I like the answer. <laughs> it's a good answer. But yeah. like you, when you're creating art, you can always do that until the day you die. Yeah. That's why I like it. And you know, that's kind of why I like the podcast because it's like, if I have a place that I don't have to pay for and I can uh, wake up and just make it in my living room mm -hmm. or in the garage and it's two hours of content, you know, it's just like, it's free, it's fast, just like I want a studio in my crib too. Yeah. So I totally hear what you're saying because I went from like recording on my own to thinking I can't do it to recording in the studio and then coming back to being like, I can do this on my own, wake up and do it for free right and just you know like uh, I, feel, I feel like recording is a performance anyways it's, well yeah especially if, if you're in covid they're all kind of listening to your shit it's still yeah. you're still performing for them but, but even even when you're just recording you're like performing and like i bet people like let's say you're just a jazz pianist whatever 
and all you can miss. That's right, I said it. <laughs> Sorry, so you're just like, like a jazz dancer. <laughs> If you're a jazz pianist and you just all you do is perform and you've like never recorded, you can still sit at home and play whatever. I think you're still recording memories in your head in a way, right? When you're like, oh, I'm playing this, and then you remember it, and like, oh, I'm playing this, whatever. I feel like everything is a performance, anyways. So like recording is just kind of like that extra um, solidification of it existing for longer than you. You know what I mean? So like what you might pass away, but your recordings will I do, should so stick around. I, I, I don't know if you told me this, maybe I forgot, and the people will probably don't know, but do you have any kids? I do not. What do you plan to do with your music when you die? I don't know, it'll probably... Hey? fucking dwindle into I there. sometimes think about that though. Do you ever think about that? Yep. Have you seen the option on the bottom of like the sites that you put your shit up to iTunes, the live forever option? Yes. That's kind of creepy. That. Like who's taking the money? First off, even whether it's going to be alive or not, it's weird that you, like it would just like, you know, it'd be cool if you could be like, uh, if it, well, if you ever did have a kid, you'd put it in your will and be like, oh, this is going to them, but, or someone you love, mm -hmm. you know, just, like, I think, doesn't that exist, like, because you pay for your, to put your music up, and, like, it's in your, on your credit card, for example, your account, so the moment you pass away, won't your membership cease to exist? Isn't that why it's up? Yeah, but I think people will still have to buy it, though, mm -hmm. if it's through that site. Yeah. You know, like, because the, the whole distro kid, uh, TuneCore, fucking whatever you sign up to to get your shit on, is all monetized. You know, so I don't know if they have free options on those sites. I don't know though, like this is just me like throwing... This is why I like physical media, because Dude. that will exist. Tear off the fucking power, there's nothing! <laughs> That's what I'm saying about even just the banks, dude. Yeah. Yo, I, like what if you go there one day and it's just shut down? That's right. And you go there like, oh, the number on the screen is zero, like... like, like oh, I so I guess they have no money, yeah. suddenly. Or, or just no music, Right. you know, like, you know, like I was thinking like if everything shut down, be cool to have like a generator and just like a stereo and some CDs and shit, you know, like there's something to power some shit. Like, like, cause if the internet or anything happened, it's like all these ways of making money nowadays. It's like everyone's make so much money online, but if they just turned the online offline, you'd be fucked. Right. You know, it's like this is why I like. I agree with a few, you. A few years ago, I became reinvested like in vinyl or the idea of vinyl <laughs> oh shit i didn't know that was gonna happen I, i'm an idiot okay. um anyway because like vinyl is all like vibrations right yeah it's not when you think of a cd at like in contrast the cd is like digital um oh shit Let's just do this. Oh, sorry no. um uh digital interpretations of your music whereas vinyl is an actual vibration someone who's like let's say someone you know understands vibrations they can still listen to your music like look in alien technology here's where my brain went on that wavelength like, so of when you die here oh, when, when, my when the uh like when the human race is expired and let's say someone finds your record in a rubble, no. rubble heap and they're like what are these weird grooves and like they understand vibrations and sounds, which is like oh a pretty God. universal thing, right? I, I would ex imagine vibrations and sound are relatively universal. But <clears throat> zeros and ones, theoretically they're uh, like universal, but does an alien know what a zero and a one looks like? You know, binary for like CDs? You know what I'm saying? Weird. So digi digi digitization is a human thing. Um, even though the concept is probably pretty, like, intellectual, they probably understand it, but they don't know zeros and ones. So I, they I can never read a CD. They, they can never read. actually read a CD, but they can read a, like, vibration. Uh, okay. That's where my brain went one day when I, I was like, man, final is so, like, it's forever. Insane, dude. Maybe that's why it's, like, has longevity over, like, cassettes and CDs and stuff. I don't know. Just to think, well, cassette is like something I can understand, mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, this is light, 
or like some kind of like heat being projected, yeah, that's right. projected through like something that has like a tiny picture. Or I, actually, no, I'm thinking more like of a probably a camera how it's like burning yeah. into the picture, like a like video. But I never understood like how they could like shoot a laser at the bottom of a disc mm -hmm. and make sound. Like it doesn't like yeah. compute in my brain. Like I'm just. I'm not the smartest person. <laughs> like when I think of it, I'm like, you don't have to be. what the fuck? Like, how is it like going through this tiny cord? This whole sound, like, mm -hmm. I, that's crazy to me. Like the technology, I think, is like way further than people really understand. Mm -hmm. Like in a sense, like it's like, and then the, how do you put this like little pin on this piece of plastic, and it just makes a song? Like it just like goes into the fucking cord, it goes into the power, yeah. and it just. The song comes out that you recorded like fucking ten years ago. You're like, what the fuck, dude? I, I right. when you say the vibrations it's, and the shit, I like, I never studied it, so I don't know. But when I, it's fascinating. It's like, In my yeah. head, that's why I like it is, dude. Really obsessed over it for a bit, and I'm like, I'm gonna do all my albums on file. And now I'm just kind of like, I'm good. They're pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's very expensive to press, right. and that's why I only did a couple. Me too, man. But um, I were like fucking fifty bucks or something, or like they was or like thirty five or I was I only bought like three of them. Like mm -hmm. I bought like a really low number just to like see them and have them and mm -hmm. put them up to like three people or whatever. And uh, maybe I just didn't like get a good deal or bought like they're I can't remember they're just insane amount of money like. Kind of the same deal, like I print skateboards sometimes too, and I get them for like 70 when did, bucks. When did you start rapping? I want to know. Bro. <laughs> Bro. Okay, listen, no to one's this. ever asked me. No, 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 that's okay. That's no. nice. That's just, like, that's my like, authentic reaction. Like, <laughs> it's just been a long fucking time. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's been so fucking long. Like, I, uh, I've probably been rapping since fucking, I want to say, like, 17 years old 16 or 17 and i was like i had the really bad music back then like and it, my music still is really bad i'm just like finding myself oh, and the and the, no I'm, I'm dead ass like i feel like i'm just like i just know where the bar's been set and like i'm humble i'm like totally get it i'm not fucking uh, like the shit i made before like i wish i could erase it from existence but it's, it is it's somewhere you can find it, and it's really bad. But I think it's sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. 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 What so year 30, was that? Thirty-three. I have no idea. I don't remember what year that was. Like, who were you listening to when you when it when you started? Um. Okay, so uh, the the like I have three older brothers. Mm -hmm. and they all listen to Blue Tang. Yeah. And then my dad was like heavy into ACDC. So oh. when I was a kid, it was like ACDC and Blue Tang, mm -hmm. and then. Um, Sorry, what was the question again? I'm, like, what, I'm trying to find out what year you started, like what era you started rapping in. Oh yeah, uh, probably 16, 17, but I thought there was another Yeah, like part. what year? Oh, what year? Fuck yeah, I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. I wish I knew that. All right. Years and times and shit, I wish I took more <laughs> like, more like, uh, like stamp shit. Like when I put my songs up on SoundCloud now and shit, I like put the year in brackets beside the song. Mm -hmm. Like, it does say when you upload it and stuff, but sometimes I re-upload them or whatever, whatever happens, but I, uh... I think I was more about. curious if you were, like, listening to, like, 50 Cent... Oh, who was that? That was, the, like, that was the second part of Jedi Mind shit. Tricks, okay. or were you listening to, like, Tupac and that, Biggie okay. and, like, okay. Souls of Mischief? Yeah, okay, that was the second part of the question <laughs> that I fucked up. Yeah. No, 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 it was fucking... When I started rapping, it was insane clown posse. Yeah. 100% juggalo this, juggalo that. I'm fucking boo-boo. I love this shit. And my little brother and my older brother got me into it because mm -hmm. uh, Dane, my younger brother, Young V, also a rapper, oh, trying yeah. to get him back into it. He has a great voice. Nice. Um, uh, Is he on any of your records? Some older shit. Yeah. yeah. And we did make a newer one. But Dane bought fucking the Jekyll Brothers and one, one less G in the hood. Blazy Dead Homie, and that shit, it's, they are really good albums, man, like, Joko Brothers is good, and then Blaze's album is, like, so, so good, man, like, the beats and everything. I and have the like, Joko Brothers on vinyl, and I've been trying to find Great oh. Malenko on vinyl, but it's just, it's too rare, and people are selling it for, like, 300 bucks, and I'm like, it's just too much to spend on vinyl. Or is yeah. it? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I don't know, because honestly, it's not, like, I fucking... I, I buy weird shit like that all the time. And like, I bought 
an old pair of shoes, Christy ass pair of shoes for like way too much because they were a pair of shoes I used to wear and they were like used. Just because I had them for like nostalgia. Yeah. So it just depends. Yeah, that's right. Um, what was I going to say? But not just, I, I, not just ICP, but like ICP, Wu Tang, fucking. Yeah. And then that just got me into the, you know, Juggalo underground, like horrorcore shit. And I loved Jedi Tricks and all that. And that was like a more of like a gradual thing because yeah. I was like storytelling, yeah. like face paint stuff, cool stuff. And then it was like lyrical, hardcore shit. Mm hmm. And then it was like, now I'm kind of like, just kind of open to everything. So, like, when you started, I'm so curious because I I can't, I'm trying to remember how I did it. So I'm asking you, oh. did you, like, sit down and be like, hey, I'm going to write a rap song. And then you wrote a rap song. Or did you say, like, or did you just, like, this is the I'm going to rap someone else's song. No, no, no never, never. <laughs> someone else's song. No, no, no. Okay, this is the thing. Uh... <laughs> So I had the dopest upbringing, bro. Like my older brother was in this like little crew in Red Deer called the Definitive Few, mm -hmm. and there's probably like had a producer in it named Richard Waters, who was also H two O, and he was like a producer back in the day. And he was like Red Deer's probably only producer. Like it was like way back in the fucking day. I like try to remember this group from Red Deer. Started. It was like a. I have their album. What are they called? Anyway, sorry, finish the story. And um, uh, there's a bunch of, there's a good little music scene right here, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so I had like an upbringing of like my older brother rapping, and then my little brother kind of started to rap, and then I started rap. But like, we started to rap around the same time our friend Brian Samuel, or Brian uh, Alaric started to rap. His name's Lethal Dose, and he was like already into ICP, like way before us like into rap and already had a computer and a microphone and shit like that. So he was already making rap songs and singing and had a uh, sound click fucking you remember sound click? Yeah, yeah, it's still like, around though. Yeah, like, I know I was <laughs> like, like, like searching my old songs. I'm like, what? Our old songs are still, still on, on there, like, like, No! Yeah. How do I get them up? I can't log in anymore. I just gotta like, change your password. Yeah, I guess so. I don't remember my email from back then though. Like it's so long ago. <laughs> There's gotta be a way you can change it from alternate email, maybe. Because I I couldn't remember mine, and I just fucking re-uploaded all my new shit. That's so funny. But then, so then I then, like Brian is rapping, and then all of a sudden, like everybody in the basement started rapping. Like my friend Shane and Ali B, his little brother, my little brother, me, like Brian, my friend Lauren. We all were like Alberta murderers, and it kind of like changed and like everybody mm -hmm. like, and then they have like little groups within the group. And it was like this is this cool circle to learn to make music in because I had like a Brian to show me like how to use a computer and how to like, oh, this is just a program you upload. And it just kind of happened like so like gradually. And then like, but I never did like somebody else's song or covered for anybody else. I always would just like write some weird fucking rap. Like I had a song called Period Blood one time. Like, when? you know, like, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> shit, like Dude, and I did really funny shit too, though. Yeah. Like wacky, funny shit that like wasn't rap. It was just, but yeah. Sorry for the long answer, but it was just like a cool upbringing because like everybody did it, and they all man, I just wish they all still did because we all had like this like little crew in this basement, and yeah, it was really like, cool. It's well, like I'm I never just, jealous. Oh, dude. Well, you got you have the, you have the homies that got on the DC show, so, and it's the same thing. We were just like super. Great, we were yeah. super young. Like we were like yeah. 16, 17, yeah. and we like know each other for like the last fifteen. Like, yeah, 20. I was around the same age actually. So like nineteen ninety. That's dope, man. Ninety eight, ninety nine is when I started. Uh, no, I I would say I actually wrote my first rap way before that. I wrote my first rap in like grade nine. Which I would have been like 13 or 14. And wow. it was about. Uh, Period blood? So, <laughs> no, interestingly enough. Well, let's, let's go back a bit, because I did used to write like rhyming poetry with like a cadence all the time, but it was just kind of like yeah. for English class. And I remember my teacher saying, Well, you have a great cadence to your rhymes. And I was like, Cool. Didn't even think about like rap at that point. But then I was also in band class, and. Uh, my band teacher was like, oh, I, I want to record a CD of all every, all the musicians in the school, blah, blah, blah. And I hadn't even thought about it. I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to like 
Jeez. rap on this CD, and I never even rapped before. But I was like, oh, that'd be so cool to rap on a CD. Yeah. And uh, I never, it never happened, so I never did anything. But like, I remember writing down, just so I like understood writing raps, I wrote down this guy, this rapper named Mr. Mike. This guy was like out in 1996, 97. And uh, I wrote down one of, a whole song of his, just like, word for word, and there were some words in there I should have, shouldn't have written down, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did anyway. Well, you just stand there with your thoughts. I right? was like nine, I was grade nine, whatever. Never thought to rewrite. No, no, no first thought. I wrote it down. down. I didn't say it. I just wrote it down, just writing lyrics down. I'm allowed to do that. Anyway. <laughs> and like... Swears? Next swears and... Or sexual things towards the teacher? <laughs> teacher? No, no. Uh, um, the first of my teachers. The first uh, rap song I wrote was about <laughs> Barney going to Jurassic Park and getting killed. Oh, yeah. dude! Okay, so. this gives me another dinosaur <laughs> shit. I <have> to, you <laughs> know. Yo, so I had there was dude. like, and it was over. You remember "Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Can See" by Busta Rhymes? Uh, probably did, did it, but yeah. anyway, yeah. I I had bought a single, and there was an instrumental on that CD. And I rapped to it, like, with cassette player, and I was like, oh, it's so cool that I can do this with a ghetto blaster, and I figured out how to record from the yeah. CD onto it, and there was, Yo, like, a mic built-in microphone on the thing. This is a cooler story than mine. And I rapped over the Bus Rhymes instrumental about Barney getting killed in Jurassic Park, and it was, like, a whole, like, five-minute-long rap. <laughs> so I don't have it anymore. So oh, I don't, wish, I don't know what happened You gotta recreate it. it. That would be the sickest cartoon. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Well, it was actually based off of that line in the Weird Al song, uh, his song oh, Jurassic Park, Al. where because uh, they sure don't act like Barney, and then in the video the T Rex bites off Barney's head. So like the whole premise was based off of that Weird Al moment. <laughs> anyway, That's and funny. then I started just like writing raps from there, just looping beats or finding instrumentals. That from like singles, like I said, I would just oh this song has an oh, instrumental. Oh yeah. Okay, yes, no, okay. I have to say one thing. I take back quickly. I did rap over other people's beats all the time, yeah. but I never did their song. Sorry, right. sorry. That there's a. I should have did like no. your grand shit. Sorry. Yeah, I was just thinking of the lyrics that I wrote down of the other dude's song. Just yeah. to understand. No, no, I know that. But then when you said that, yeah. like you like would grab beats, other people's beats. I just wanted to. Admit, I wasn't saying in your situation, but I just mean like. I did, so people might think that, like, I wasn't, like, taking that actual, and I'm not saying you were, I'm just saying that I did take beats all yeah, the yeah. fucking time, and, like, of course you take <laughs> ideas, right? Yeah. Like, but sorry if I said that. <clears throat> That's fine. Um, so, like, as soon as I was like, oh, man, I want to make my own beats, this was, what year was this? It would have been 98, 99, oh. and I'm like, oh, computers can make, I can make MIDI beats on computer, right. but, like, <clears throat> the computer I had was, like, a 90s computer, right? So these MIDI the programs. Macintosh? It was a, the no, it was an Acer, so it would have been a Windows, like Windows 95 type of thing. And like these MIDI programs, I used my mouse to play the notes live. So as like the tempo was going, I'm like, click, click, click with the mouse, yes. trying to like make a rhythm. And every time I wanted to do something fast, I'm like, oh, how do I do this? Because the <laughs> finger doesn't click and move that fast. Oh. And here I am, an actual piano player, like, oh, I, oh, wish I, could, delayed shit. I wish I could play the piano, but I'm, like, trying to do it with a mouse, and yeah. it's so awkward, and, like, the beats were, like, 90s MIDI, which sounded like a video game, like a Nintendo video game. That's what my beats sounded like, they were like, that's do, dope, do, 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 that's do, sick, do you have any of them? <laughs> uh, I have some of those guys, <laughs> please. But, like, when you talk about, like, super humble beginnings and, like, music being trash when you're 16, oh, I think I might have you beat. Yeah. No, no, dude, no. Yeah, okay, okay I, you have me beat, um, like, I feel like on just, like, the creativity of, like, learning. Because, like, I kind of, like, had someone there, like, before me sitting there, like, this is how you do it. You just sound like you kind of were, like, oh, shit, like, kind of figuring out yourself, yeah. and I just respect that. So, so awesome. it really blew my mind when I realized that, like, I could record it onto a wave, like, the wave recorder, Yeah. if you remember that, and then, like, MP3s were just kind of coming out at this time, so Winamp had, like, a wave to MP3 converter, and I was like, what? I can make my song into an MP3? 
I was like, what? I can make an MP3? I was like, mind blowing. Out of one of my songs? And it can be on Winamp just with like my other songs that I've stolen off the internet? <laughs> <laughs> I won't get sued. <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, here's another thing I've never said to anyone. Yes. Like the first, this this CD is hidden forever and I'm not even sure if like the digi digital like CD still is listenable. But my first raps that I did after that initial Jurassic Park one, I tried to like do this style where I had a lisp, which was really weird. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. Like, rapping like this. Little poop? Like, it's like this when I was rapping. Little poop? Is that what he sounds like? Well, I'm, you I'm see not familiar. ICP's movie? Uh, Big, Big Buddy, Buddy Hustlers? Hustlers. <laughs> Yo, it's little poop, Sean. It's little poop. Yes, exactly <laughs> like that. But I was doing that in my raps and I was like, after I recorded a few songs like this and I started showing people and they were like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you, why are you putting on that list? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. It's G, man. <laughs> it's I real think, G shit. I think my thing was that I, Anybody did, kill her. that I didn't like my voice and I didn't want to hear me. Mm. Like, your recorded voice, when you start, you're just kind of like, what oh, it is. So I think I just didn't want to sound like myself. And eventually yeah. I was like, oh, that's weird. Why would I not want to sound like myself? Yeah, that's what I went through too because yeah. my voice is like I go through that every day still. Yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> I listen to this album and I'm like, oh, I'm the worst sounding rapper on this. Honestly, I say the same <laughs> thing for myself, and I I hated my voice, but I'm learning to love it because <clears throat> it does carry itself. I feel like it's real high pitch, and I always when I hear myself in cameras, it's like I don't know, I don't know, it's just like I was a little like skinny white kid, like where like literally like a squirrel, like and just. I didn't. I hated my voice on camera. Excuse me. I had one. Oh, yeah. I don't know. This was that hazy a pale ale. Rap a eighty eight brewery uh, used to have a pizza shop in the back, and now they're called the Noble Pie. Neither sponsor us, but we love them. But um, so I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Your voice. Okay. Yeah. Hated it. Now I'm starting to love it. Be uh, just because over time. I don't know, just when you get more mature, you start to, like, get more in your... May in I your say, spot, though, you know, like... May I say, though, as I was listening <clears throat> to your stuff today, like... I feel like I, I dabbled into some of your older stuff. And by older stuff, I mean, like, six, seven years ago. Captain nine years Wild ago? No, the one with self-titled. Captain That's, like, nine, ten years ago, right? I hate that verse. I'm but you know what? You know what? As much as you might hate it, like, your flow sounds it. supernatural. Like... Thank you, buddy. Genuinely, not, not like supernatural, but like... <laughs> <laughs> the lights are shining down upon me! <laughs> no. But like super genuine. Yeah, thanks. It's just like your flow feels like you're not trying too hard. And I, when I listen to like even myself 10 years ago, I'm like, oh man, I was trying way too hard on this. And I was trying to fit too many words. Even after having rapped for like 10 years at this point, like... Back in 2010, I had already been rapping for 10 plus years, and like I was still like struggling with rhythm here and there. Not that I couldn't do it, but I feel like I was just trying to do too much. Yeah. When I, I would have a few verses like previously that would like I would get it. Yeah. But not like in every verse. You know what I mean? When I got the self-titled verse. I was like real pressured because I didn't make the song before I sent it to him. I just sent him the beat, and then he sent me this verse that was like way better, like I, like one of like his best verses, I think. Like I have a lot of his music, and I listen yeah. to it all the time. And I was like, this is like right up there. He didn't like not try. Yeah, like killed it. And I was like, oh, and I was like super pressured, and I was like, it was super late, and I the way I put shit out is super sloppy, and like over time, and I got pressured, and I. Put it down and it was like, I thought it was good at the time, but when I listened to it after, I was like, it should have taken a little bit more time. And the one thing that I always felt like I did have when I started was just being able to layer different styles of voices together and, and have the flow. And like, have like a weird little flow. And that's where I learned, like, I used to have fucking a PA system in my basement every single day. Mm -hmm. I went down there every fucking day and performed my songs. I still do every single day, yeah. perform new songs and old songs. Like, yeah. just listening to my own shit constantly. And, like, I don't know where I got it from because... Or maybe there's just a period in time where I just couldn't remember when 
I was like learning to get it, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just like, can only remember ever like being able to like flow with ease, but mm -hmm. write with difficulty because the subjects I'm writing are not, <laughs> period of blood, people might not want to hear about that shit, or fucking, you know, just random like me being pressured, like now <clears throat> being pressured to write these crazy battle bars. Because yeah. I love that shit when I hear them, like, oh shit, or the double entendre shit, like, mm -hmm. where it's like, said like four things in one way. That shit is so cool to me. I'm like, want to like, be able to learn how to do that. And it's like stages and shit, and I probably will never be able to do it. But I'm more on like the cadence and flow and like just creating yeah. uh, a track as opposed to this hardcore fucking battle shit. It's so dope. Though. Speaking of that, I was curious. Have you ever had like a legit rap beef where you like wrote a diss track and they wrote a diss track back? Have you ever had that? Never have been. Uh, I'm trying to think of all my songs right now if I've ever like mentioned anything. I don't think I've ever said anybody's name. I don't think I've ever mm -hmm. said anything uh, like to be like say to someone like so they would hear it and they would know. I don't think I. I think it was more like just like real time. Like, people, I think, just don't like me. And that's what I, I've always, I've always been a person that, like, has been just, like, in the corner quiet, and then just for some reason was like, people don't like me. And I don't, I'm dead ass, I'm dead ass. And I, 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 I can't, like, I, if I look at all my tracks, I don't think I have anything that was ever directed towards anybody other than an ex-girlfriend, or my mom dying, or my dad dying. Or like some like crazy weird story that I have like about capital D and like I don't have anything directed in, in music towards anybody that's like like a rap beef between another rapper because I would probably like I don't want to bring I don't want to put that pressure on myself to be like because first off I know I'm not the fucking best and if I was I still don't think I would be like more inclined to like beef with people but I feel like if someone really made a fool of me I would fucking reply right 100 percent you know like that that's it like that's my main answer is like I would reply and I would take a lot of time with it and I would probably get into it and I don't want to though because I fucking like right. like this and like I like working together I don't want to have animosity towards someone else that I probably don't even fucking know over like right. something that is like literally nothing it's just two grown ass men writing poems against each other yeah. like, that's what it is in the end and they always end up being friends after right it's like two guys fighting in the back alley they're like okay let's go have a beer after yeah. I like that's whatever but no I think no I honestly no. think no and I wouldn't want to but I would reply yeah sorry for the long answer no that's a fair answer I like it do you no I've never had a I've never had a real like rap beef i've never had a track for track kind of rap beef, no. and i've never like like i've heard comments from people in the scene and like when i was back on like rap forums like message boards back in the early 2000s people would talk shit all the time so that would be like the extent of what i would get into and i'd just be like talking shit on rap uh message boards but i think there was a couple tracks where i like brought up incidents where people were like really fucking pissing me off and they were rappers but i don't think they ever heard of them so it doesn't count <laughs> okay okay that's hilarious you know i have to tell you some juicy shit right now uh, i paid five racks to get on the from the dirt sack the ripper tour okay like 35 to 40 shows and we're sitting in the house bro this is like, I'm like, I'm gonna get emotional almost because I was like, I paid to get on Snack Ripper's tour. Mm -hmm. I love SDK, I love Snack, I love Mercules, I love all those fucking guys. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in this house, and it's like that merch house or whatever, and we're like, I'm just chilling there in the living room or the kitchen. And someone comes up to me, I think it was Snack, came right up to me and was like, So yeah, what's up with the uh, diss track you have on Mercules? I was like, what? I was like, oh shit, my heart like started pounding. I was like, what? I was like, no way, man. Like, I n never, dude. I would never diss Mercules. I love all you guys. Why am I here? Why do I pay five racks to be on this fucking tour? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like fucking pretty drunk too, and I like walk over and uh, fuck it. It was it was a good night, but it was really struck. Kind of like had a weird feeling to it after that. It ended good, but 
it was like, I walked up to Merck and I was like, dude, who, why, who made the diss track, or who's saying I made a diss track, and he said a name, I'm not going to say it because I'm not like that, but it was just like, so fucking weird for someone to tell another person that I did make yeah, yeah, one yeah. when I've never made a diss track in my fucking right. life. Right. I just admit, like, 100%, like, I, I couldn't do it, why would I do it? You know, like, why would I make a track against someone who could just, like, kill me with a post? <laughs> like, literally. And then I religiously listen to their music. Yeah. Literally, all the time. Like, I'm on the fucking tour here. I'm trying to, like, get with you guys. And, like, I, yeah. I, even if I don't, I'm just trying here to do my own thing. And why would I, like, try to fuck that up? Yeah. So, and, and, all, and the whole thing with diss tracks? No, I don't have a diss track against anybody. <laughs> I actually got one against Ken Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I don't. Sorry, but, but it's some it juicy guys. shit. I have crazy stories, dude. I have crazy, yeah. weird stories. Like, yeah, and and it's like, dog, yeah. no, I would never, man. I, I fucking, like I said, I wouldn't, I would never do that. Yeah, I have, I have okay. a couple verses where I address some things. Mm. Back in, um, I'm not gonna say names, but back in 2006, there was, was I was doing a show in Edmonton, and like, I don't know if you were in the hip hop scene back then, back in 05, 06, but like... I'm trying to think, how old would I be? Could you do a math that feels dumb? No, no, like, no. I'm like, down it. I'm 33. No. Yeah, okay, anyways, yeah, I don't um, think I But like, rappers were notorious for not starting shows until like 11, 11.30. Oh, and saying the doors open at 9? <laughs> yeah. So like, there was a few things where like, I booked a show in Edmonton and the opener shows up at like 11 30 and like everyone who i invited to the show was like we're leaving this it's wow 10 30 no. you said the doors were at eight show starts at nine <laughs> like, eight o'clock. like you know what i mean they're like, five hours I'm yeah drunk as fuck. yeah and so like i was livid because like everyone who came to see us were leaving as they left and the funny part, or as they were performing, and the funny argument after was that, like, no one was even here for your set, because, like, cause, yeah, because we played that, we were supposed to play after you, and, yeah. like, this and that, and so I wrote a verse about that, I was, well, that was just one in, incident in a string of, like, a few incidents where the similar thing happened, where, like, like, you're... You're an opener, and you're showing up to the venue at 11, 11.30? Like, are you mental? This is, this is not how, like, music succeeds, right? Yeah. If you're trying to draw in an audience of people... At least have a fucking greeter on the stage. Like, you are the opener. The first <clears throat> act, you know this, and you're showing up at 11, 11.30? Like, get out of here. Get real. <laughs> I was so mad. Anyway, so I wrote a verse about that back in like 2006, and uh, I did throw in like a sneak diss of their name in that a sneak diss. Yeah, that's it was like a best. double entendre. That's so it wasn't a it wasn't a straight up like yeah, you your name's it this. It's like I'm saying your name in this sentence, not as your name though. Anyway, backwards. <laughs> No, uh, I said the name, oh, no, it's just like in the sentence, so it wasn't yeah. like, hey, so-and-so, I'm talking to you, it's like, I'm gonna so-and-so this thing, like, I did it, this, this, whatever. Anyway. Did you say the bar? No. <laughs> no. Can't remember. I actually, I don't want as you say, after you beef with someone, you tend to make up, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're in that, sure. okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I don't really want yeah, no. to re-bring re up something they may know. have never even picked yeah, up on, and they're like, what did you say? Yeah. I'm like, ah, don't worry about it. I was just pissed. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you go to a fucking show and you're opening or or like your head have you ever headlined a show in a like a different city mm -hmm. and then the people who like everybody left because they only came to see the openers or have you noticed it with bigger acts even like slighter bigger acts with like people only come to see the openers and they'll leave and the person here's like on tours like so, so you probably been in this issue. Yeah, I'm in this situation. Here I'm gonna say names, but only because whatever. So I opened for Sunreal in twenty. Oh, He's pretty dope. Yeah, twenty eleven. He's doing pretty pretty well for himself right yeah. now. So in twenty eleven, I want to say, I we played at Dickens and I opened for him and I sold like I don't know twenty five tickets. Dope. Let's go, Paul. It was, so de I know it was decent. That's dope. But. Yeah. 
they were all there. There was like 30 people there in total. So they they started to leave and like he played for (laughs) me and a couple of my buddies. And I remember him saying like, where's everyone going? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And like, I kind of felt bad for him yeah. because he was on tour and he was bigger than me and he obviously still is, but I remember at the time. And like two years later, I went to his show and he was playing at Gateway and he actually addressed, he's like, oh, man, a couple of years ago, I was playing this shitty venue. <laughs> this shitty no one was there. And I'm like, Really? I'm, I'm in the oh, audience. I thought he was gonna big you up. No, no. Oh, I'm in the God. audience watching. Because like, nobody knew you then. You had to grow, motherfucker. Yeah. Be humble. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. yeah talking shit about some real. Actually. Now I am. I now like we got some rat beef, son. Now we got some rat beef. No, no, rat beef. no, no he, I like some real. No, he's dope. He's yeah. dope. But I, he I do recall him saying play. that at the show, being like, "We played this show for nobody in this small underground club, whatever." And I'm like, "Man." Was it the first time or the third time? Uh, anyway. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Okay, so your love for dinosaurs came real early. Real early? Yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm not just gonna, ne- I just never grew out of it. Not because I don't know. I do know, but what is your favorite dinosaur? Because I do know. I heard it in a song. Unless that's just a song. My favorite dinosaur is an Allosaurus. What is an Allosaurus? It's a... Alligator? <laughs> Is it an alligator with fucking wings like a pterodactyl? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm glad I got a fucking no. make you laugh there. That was awesome, dude. This is real. This is real. Welcome to the Pyramid Podcast. We got King Dylan here, dinosaur fanatic. Oh man! Because I, it sounds like an alligator. It, it, no. I'm sorry. No. But alligators are dinosaurs still, right? It, they were around at the same time, but they're not. But look at that thing. That's a dinosaur. No. Yeah. That's like the fucking cockroach of dinosaurs. Do you want to get technical? No. <laughs> no. But yeah. if you want to kind Please of like correct me. group all somewhat prehistoric animals together, then yeah, it's kind of a dinosaur. Uh, okay. What's an allosaurus though? It's a uh, theropod. It's like a... What is that? <laughs> Let's go. It's Let's a, go. It's a bipedal carnivore. So like two feet, kind of like a T-Rex, but smaller. Okay. Three fingers instead of two more useful arms, for example, and uh, it lived in the Jurassic period and not in the Cretaceous period. Like it was, oh, man, I'm so uninformed. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you say that, I'm just like, oh, shit, I need to read a book. Um, Allosaurus was actually one of the first dinosaurs found back in, like, the 1800s. It was used to be called Megalosaurus, I believe. Okay. I could be wrong about that. Sorry, how big is it? It's like big. It's about as tall as your roof. Okay, like so a little bit bigger than raptors, a little bit smaller than bigger than raptors. In between, like Utah raptors and T Rex. Yeah. So like the raptors in Jurassic Park and the T Rex, they'll be like midway between there. So, and that's why I like it is because it's not super popular, like me. <laughs> um, well, that won't be for long. That's for sure. Nah, nah. nah Favorite be. Jurassic Park. It is the first one for sure, right? but I like all of them except for the the, new, the latest one. I think the latest one really shit the bed. Did you ever go <laughs> to drum? Did you ever go to drum heller or ever want to be one of those guys who like dig on the bones? Uh, pause. <laughs> I've been to drum heller like ten to twelve times, and I did go on a day dig. But like as a kid, did you ever as want a kid? To... No, but or like did like, so you had you probably wanted to. What well, I don't know the yeah. name for what those guys. Paleontologist. Are. Paleontologist. You probably wanted to be a paleontologist growing up. Yeah. 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 I, I did mention in my song actually. I think I have a line where I'm like, I sh- yeah, should have been a paleontologist. It's oh, obvious. I I should... Oh yeah. It's obvious. I, I should have been a paleontologist. I don't remember. I think I did listen to that too. Yeah. Today. God damn it. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I went on a day dig and we went in like to a dig site and then we went back to the museum and like picked a bones and this was when I was like, I want to say 14, 15. So I was I went there supposed too. to have been grown out of it by that <clears throat> point because all the kids in my class know. were like starting smoking and skateboarding. <laughs> Fuck smoking. <laughs> Fuck smoking. Skateboarding's cool, okay? Yeah, yeah. Don't do that to us, okay? We're in the Olympics now. We're not all just smokers and drinkers. <laughs> No, back in the day, 100%, dog. Yeah. It's like, you're cool because you 
party and skateboard. It's like not even like that. Yeah. I totally get that though. I've seen some old school shit and I'm like, this is fucked. It was like punk rock shit. But sorry, go ahead. Drum handler. Um, so, like, in the last few years, I've, I've tried to, like, book shows out in Drumheller just so I could, like, have another reason to go out there, and, uh, I could probably get you that hookup. Yeah. You're pretty welcoming there. Oh, yeah, okay. Neighbors, okay. Um, to say, like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Played there a couple times. I love them. They're great. Who's one of the local rappers that opens up their pocket? Jay them. McLean. Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot his name. He's such yeah. a dope guy. Shout out to Jay McLean. He's a dope guy. Man. Yeah, awesome. shout out to Jay McLean, indeed. He, uh, actually was... I had a booth for my art at uh, the Dinosaur Comic Con they had there, and he stopped by just like to say hello and buy my record. So I was like, "Fuck, man! He's I've never even me. met you before." Yeah. And like just He's through awesome. the internet, he stopped by and he said, "What up?" And I was like, "He he bought one of my paintings, prints for his kid." And I was like, "Man, not only a great supporter, dope. but great artist too." Is he? He's, yeah, he raps and shit. He's got good voice. Oh, I thought yeah. you meant like. Artist. Oh, no, oh like, yeah, sorry, I, no. I shouldn't, yeah, he's a rapper, but... Yeah, I've, I've heard him rap too. I, I shouldn't, like, shit, that's not the same thing, I totally get it. especially coming from you, because you're, like, super into drawing and stuff like that. I was just confused, because I'm a confused old man. I have, to, <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you this weird question, Is based on dinosaurs, I saw it, I don't know if the algorithm or the computer, the microphone is listening to me, because <laughs> probably listening to you, dinosaurs, right? right? Have you ever seen the movie Velocipaster? <laughs> have you seen that meme? I, I've I've seen the uh, like uh, poster for it, but I've never actually watched the movie. So it was it a meme or the poster? Well, I like was it a post movie. on Facebook or actual memes. theater like movie poster? Uh, I can't remember. But Dude, I've definitely seen like the poster artwork in some regard. After losing his parents, a priest travels to China where he inherits the mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. At first horrified by this new power, a prostitute convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. <laughs> Dude. I'm sorry, dude. I had to, when I said that, when I saw that, I was like, "This is." I have to say this. Like, this is too fucking funny. Okay, you want to hear another secret about my childhood? Yeah. So I made a movie back in 1990. What? Seven or eight. 19, 1998, I think. This guy knows all the years and what year and how old. He so was, right? God, it was. It was like a half I need an to hour. Study that. Why don't I know that? I'm an idiot. It was like a half an hour homemade film. I borrowed my buddy uh, Yousef's camera. Shout out to Yousef Montasser. Solid dude. But I haven't talked to him in like 20 years. But anyway. Was it an RCA? Or what? Yeah, yeah. He's... Well, it was like, uh, yeah. It's pretty big. It was like the size of yeah. this. Anyway, he lent it to me. <clears throat> and I shot this movie where I literally <laughs> like ran around the woods like a dinosaur. But like, there's no special effects. There was just like quick cut scenes of like running through the woods and then like me quickly running by the screen and then like people like bodies laying around I'm like what happened what happened here and i'd be like a cut to a shot of me like <laughs> i can't <laughs> I hate them. so i have it i made like a i printed a VHS cover for it, and it was like sitting in my drawer, <laughs> and uh, I still have it in my house, and my girlfriend moved in, and she was like going through my videos, and she was like, what is this? And I was like, nothing. And I grabbed it and ran away, and she's like, no, no, yes. what is it? Please release it. I'm like, nope. Doug. Never happened. No, but when you're like super famous, <laughs> you have to. Because then find... it won't matter. Then you're like, ah, fuck it. I got billions. Fuck you. I'm I need really to sick. find a VHS to like digital converter. I don't even have a VHS player. So. Oh uh, yeah, that's probably I like seven hundred bucks. It's probably like seven hundred bucks at the yeah. pawn shop. Like, it's literally the greatest movie I've ever made. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no, but I even got my mom to act in it. And she says a lie, and then she's like, oh, what happened here, or whatever. And, oh. and it gets to a scene, and she's dead, suddenly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, how old it's were you? so doing? bad. I was like 15, 16. Okay. This is before yeah, I Yeah, that's about the time you Before started I started rapping. rapping. Yeah. yeah. Before awesome. I spent my time better. <laughs> Do you always have a fucking uh, live band when you perform? Or are you always, uh, like, play keyboard when you perform? I do now, yeah. yeah. I used to just kind of play with beats and raps but then I it's really impressive dude when I saw you at that show I was like stoked 
that you're on there like singing, going from singing to rapping and playing. I was like, Doug. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. No problem, man. I, uh, <clears throat> I played in a rock band for like five years. Oh, like, what was it called? No. Let's not. What was it called? No. This is where we learn pass- about... No, I don't want to talk about this band. They're just a passing story in why I play with the keyboard. Or do they still exist? No. Okay, well, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is still in this group, so... Okay. Oh, um, okay. Fuck, they're dope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. No, um, we were called Broken Ride, but we, we were out for like five years, and I joined the band just kind of... Because they were in a band, and they're like, hey, we need a bass player. And I'm like, cool, I'll find you one. And they're like, do you want to play bass? I'm like, I don't know how to play bass. And they're like, you play piano, you could probably learn. I was like, no doubt. I, was like, I, I feel okay. like, isn't piano, sorry, I have to say one thing. Isn't piano, like, I heard someone say the other day, you, like, have to learn piano or one instrument to learn another regarding notes. Piano is, like, the basic, like, it's visual, and it's, like, super straightforward. Like, whatever note you want to hit, you. But it didn't make sense to me what they were saying, like. If you want to learn another instrument, you should learn piano first. Is that what they were kind of saying? Something like that. And I was like, dude, piano seems hard as fuck. Piano just like helps you learn theory, I think. Oh, okay. And it, as soon as you understand piano and notes and chords, like most other instruments seem easier. So he's probably like, you got this now. Like you can learn. Yeah. Piano. This is this. And you're like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. This is just this. And you're like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That might have been the exact conversation now that I think about it. <laughs> Straight up, dude. Continue, so, sorry, yeah, dude. that was a good time and a like super pretty awesome learning experience for like the music industry though. Like being a rap for like ten years at this point and then suddenly switching to like a rock environment. It was like night and day to like reception, like in Alberta <clears throat> and Canada. Like, we had so many more opportunities and were so much less experienced than I was at that point in, like, my rap career. Yeah. You know what I mean? Career. Whatever. Um, journey, and, hobby, career. Yeah. Whatever. Journey. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. In my rap journey. And, like, Dude. we were suddenly just offered so much more opportunities being in a rock band, which blew my mind and it kind of made me jealous. Because I was like, fuck, I put so many, so much time into this rap and stuff and like <clears throat> you join a band and suddenly you're like yeah, 500 playing, a night playing a Canadian a Music night. Week in Toronto like yeah, going on a yeah. tour on a oh, tour bus I and know. like this and that but and do you like, think that's because they just like have bands come through all the time or because bands kind of have like their own like sound and like bring speakers and the instruments because I was just thinking about that I was like man if I just had like all the speakers I could probably get in on these like little pubs because I could bring the equipment I think, I think it's, it's just the band thing, but yeah. also, you know, like, does that make sense, kind of? Like, yeah, you could bring the show. Because they're creating the sound. Anywhere. Yeah, they're yeah. creating the sound as they play, right? Whereas you're just like, I brought my sound on a DJ. With and DJ hopefully or someone here is promoting it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, but, like, I think it's a combination of those things. It's a combination of, like, live setup versus, like, um, just like they, they have like this like thing where they're like just constantly radio. putting artists through too, where they're like, we need yeah. a band every weekend, we'll pay you like the 1500 or something like that, or like, yeah. you know, like if you like think of it tour-wise, I was like, you probably just... Rappers don't, don't play covers, whereas rock fans yeah. are like, oh, can you please uh, play some cover songs yeah, for dude. like Such half your set? Different. You can play original stuff, stuff but play cover yeah. songs for half your set. Rappers don't do that. Exactly. Rappers will never do that. I should start doing songs from Coolio. <laughs> you know, like, just play, like, like, I should just go and be like, yo, I should start just doing like random fucking Gangsta's Paradise or like just like uh, Amish Paradise or like, whatever. Uh, yo, you want to hear this? I got ACDC. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. That's all right. It's fine. Uh, have like, you seen that Weird Al movie? I haven't yet because I don't have Roku. And I'm like, guy who I just noticed that they're, fucking short. they're starting to like release it on hard copy, so I kind of. I think I'll probably check it out. But back to the venues and the... Yeah, the because band. like in the mid-2000s, like, rap venues in Calgary were like almost non-existent. And yeah. if they were, they would... It'd be like a, for a streak of like three months, and then they'd, they'd be like, we're not doing rap shows anymore. Or no rap. Or like a huge whatsoever. Or something. Like, yeah. uh, for example, Dickens, who've long oh, changed... Yeah. Long different from... I think they changed ownership back in mid-thousands of some 
at some point. But I remember 2005, there was like, oh, we have these shows booked. Like there was like a month worth of shows. People were trying to put on rap shows. And all of a sudden they were all canceled because they're like, no one comes to these shows. No, no one drinks no more, beer, beer, no beer, more rap. Beer. It's not because of these promoters or no. whatever. It's like, well, we're just not doing rap at all. Yeah. And like, that, that's, that's, that was the difference when I was like, <clears throat> uh, maybe I'll just play in a rock band for a bit because I love music and I love performing. And you can sing amazingly. But I wasn't even the singer. But you should have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, uh, I'm not trying to dog the band. The band's dope. Yeah. The band, the band had its own issues, but uh, I got that vibe when I went in there because all the people who worked there were like of that scene. Because when I've did shows there and I've been to shows there, because through Calman, through Rhythm and stuff, yeah, yeah. he kind of had it on lock there. Yeah, a little bit. Eh? I don't like. I his... think he came around after Dickens had kind of come around with rap. Because like, okay. I think back, I want to say, 2010 era, maybe a couple of years before they had switched ownership. And like started booking more rap shows, like I think Soul and Members around the time, like those kind of shows, which had a lot of draw that time. At that time, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, um, uh, maybe even Apathy and Self Title played in yeah. like 2013, 2012. Yeah. So around that era, there was huge shows for rap around that time. But maybe like five years before that, there was <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of rap venues. Anyway. Where was I going with this? Talking about playing music, playing At piano, and, and uh, well, originally we were talking about just like the correlation of you like learning yeah. to be like a bass and then getting in the band, and then we. Transferred. Well, yeah, you asked me playing about playing live, and like after I played in the band, <clears throat> I liked the idea of like having a live instrument. So sick, and it kind of like just stayed because I'm like, okay, this is something I can do. I can still leave the piano. Like if you have a yeah. guitar. You're kind of stuck with the guitar, yeah. but if I have a piano, I can still leave, kind of jump around for a while, come yeah. back to the piano, and I felt like for my level of energy, I I needed to be able to leave a stationary piano. I needed to be able to move around. This is huge for me right now that you're yeah. saying that. Have, do you like the Twenty One Pilots? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I fucking I no, I, love them. I shouldn't say no, but I just haven't checked them out. I fucking love them, and some of your vocals and stuff, and just like that, demons and liars, kind of reminds me of them. And uh, when you say switching from different instruments, the dude switches from a guitar to a piano. Like, I, like I know if you're on like a big, huge production, you have it all planned out. You can pretty much do whatever. Yeah. But. It was just like the guy went like to the hardcore fucking guitar to over to the piano to like I can't remember if it was like some other instrument he was playing. Yeah. And the guy just like went through it and I was like, Oh man, this is like after I thought of it, I was like really inspired just to see people with instruments on stage and to go back and forth in between different things, but whether it be like the microphone and the piano and hopping off and doing that. And then the guy like throws out like this fucking platform on this crowd and then he throws his drums on the platform and they're holding them up while he's drumming and the guy's just going back and forth and I'm like that's awesome like you've got to see those guys live like fuck dude everybody in the fucking stands bro like way in the back I'm in the back and you had to stand up like in the nosebleeds I had to stand up where I couldn't see the shit right because I'm like why the fuck's everyone standing up <laughs> I'm like we're not down in front of the fucking stage I've never been to a show that big with that much support gotta check them out one of your favorite shows of all time <clears throat> yes, yeah. because, but only because, here's the thing, I like small little shows, because yeah. they're more personal, right. those are awesome, and, and I like more of the artists I've seen in smaller situations, but then I've seen Black Sabbath and 21 Pilots in this huge fucking theater with like yeah. 20,000 people, and that just makes the show better, but it doesn't mean that they're my favorite, or like if I could see like one of my favorite artist in a bigger situation i think that would be cool but i'd have to put it up there just because on like the statistics of the um experience like yeah. you're just like whoa like this is insane like there's millions of dollars put into this i wish i could see like some of my other artists just be like put on like this and like it takes a lot to build and get up to that like you know you have to work for it and 21 Pilots and Black Sabbath are fucking legends, and they're like, Black Sabbath, like, 
Yeah. You know, people were like, it's not Ozzy, it's a robot or it's a projection. I was like, it was fucking Ozzy. It was the last fucking really? show. Yeah, it was actually Ozzy. Because I, I saw, what was that? I, I saw, saw members of Black Sabbath. They were in a band called, what's it, Heaven and Head? No, what were they called? They had Dio as the singer. Ronnie James Dio was singing. They opened for Megadeth. Mm-hmm. I saw that. I saw them play there. So Tommy, Tommy, Tommy uh, what's it? Good? Guitar players for Black Sabbath. Tommy I, 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 I don't know. I don't need a Ozzy. <laughs> I, that's, I sound like I hate. Like, see, I need to read another book. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't remember the guitar player's name, but the guitar player from Black Sabbath was playing in a band, and I think they were called Heaven and Hell, and they opened for Megadeth. That was a great show. I've seen Megadeth like three or four times. Sick. And fun. what the main guy is like from Metallica, right? Originally. Yeah. 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 Dave Mustaine. I, I heard this, that guy say, he's like, man. If we're making millions of dollars and we gotta go to therapy to talk about our fucking problems, I'm fucking out. Like, that's like his words. Like, he's like, why the fuck do we have to sit here and fucking squabble? Yeah. Like, literally, because he was writing all the shit, wasn't he? I'm uh, pretty he did sure write he a few some of the original like, Metallica songs. Sick. Yeah. You know, like, I was like, watching the whole documentary and, like, I love Metallica, dude, and I, I like, felt bad for them. You know, people fall apart and shit, and it's such yeah. a see, and it's like, what would. I'm curious, what would be, like, the one thing you would invest in if you were given, like, a full production stage show? Like, would artist? Like, the band? Like, if you were to perform oh, live, oh, yeah. let's say, like... I would have a DJ? If, oh. you were play, if you were to play live at Saddle Dome in two months from now, what would be, like, your primary Dog. Uh, focus like five for, like... million dollars? Yeah. Oh, my God. It would be... I would have mainly a sound engineer yeah. working the board. Obviously, in that big of a situation, you're going to have that. But I just noticed the big acts that come through always have, like, a fucking sound guy with the board that's not on stage. He's not a DJ. And he's either working the effects or he's working the volumes. Yeah. Not the guy who works the fucking arena or the club or whatever. Mm-hmm. The fucking engineer guy. And I'd have the sickest DJ and an insane drummer. Nice. And that's probably all I'd have. Yeah. I wouldn't probably have too much like background singers or more instruments because I'm just like hip hop yeah. dude and I just want to like be the main attraction. And it would be like all like timed out with the lights and shit. Like that's the best thing when I see when I go into a, an arena is seeing the production. And I like I, I almost wouldn't even know I could say it right now, but it'd probably change if I just had frivolous dollars to like be like, yo, we just gonna have like Fireworks here. <laughs> like literally, tw- things, twenty-one yeah. pilots had the sickest shit. Like they'd just be like jump on the stage together and they're like, Poof! like I wouldn't have shit like that. But I'd have like it, in my own way. Like I'd probably have the DJ positioned in the crowd and shit, or like some weird ass <laughs> shit. Like think of all the shows that people have done. Like fucking from Motley Crue, the guys like fucking on the drums upside down and shit for a second because he's like spinning. Like yeah. I could do shit like that. I wouldn't be to that extent, but maybe. You'd be like in the spotlight in the sky or some shit, like crazy shit, but I, I just mainly would focus on the production of the show, and I would, like, my dream is to have a fucking drummer and a DJ. That's all, that's all I want. That'd be awesome. And it, maybe people might, like, not be down with that, they want the full band when you have all that money at your, I'd focus more on, like, the lights and the, like, how perfect my shit is spit. I'd yeah. practice on rehearsing the music as best I possibly can, so... Yeah, I've, I've played with the live band a few times, and, like, oh, man. I I love that feeling. It's, maybe it's because I did it with a rock band that, it like, I know how it feels, and I wanted to capture that with, like, my <laughs> rap music as well. But, like, when I have, like, because I make my beats, right, and I write the music for it, so when I hear a drummer and a guitar player and a bass player kind of, like, playing what I wrote, but like in their kind of style, it just, oh man. It, oh, they just recreate it and make it better. Like, yeah, they do make it better. That's they the best better. part about it. They're just like, these are professional yeah. drummers right. and professional guitar players. I'm yeah. like, you guys are so much better than ever. I could have ever thought I was when I manipulated it on uh, on the computer. Um, or like program. They can drums. just hear it and do it instantly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, it's like on the shit. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, and But the, just the vibe of that on stage just... So cool. It's just it's just expensive, so it's hard to kind of do that every time. And to get that many people. Yeah. Like it's like unless you have a band that you like grew up with that is dedicated to your success. <laughs> you or or they or not your success, but like, like groups, yeah. Everyone who's involved and like you know, 
gung ho yeah. for it. Like it's it's hard to find that. So it's kind of why Alberta murders didn't really last. And not to throw shade at my friends, I've known them forever, but it was just like a thing where I felt like I was just the only one who was like in a situation or even wanted to like really do it no matter what. So I was like. A band would be way harder than this three Persian rap group. We only need three microphones. We don't even have like anything but beats and USB and we're just playing this shit. Like it's like the easiest fucking thing to do and we just can't like figure it out and it sucks, man, because I love doing songs with people on stage, whether it be a band or a yeah. hype band or just have yeah. more energy up there with you and I'm learning it's like I'm starting over. Yeah. Because I'm alone now and I'm like, oh I still now I get the jitters a little bit more because I don't have someone to back me up. And I remember that feeling when I first started. I just stared at the ground the first couple of shows, like to focus on my lyrics. And so, no, I. Uh, so we when we played our album release in October, that was the first time we'd like all been on stage together in like 15 years. There's like pockets where like four or three of us would be playing shows, but all five of us hadn't been on stage since 2007. Um, so when any we, rehearsal. We actually didn't. We had, no, we had literally, we had like notes we sent to each other, like, because two of the guys live in Edmonton, and we're like, we don't have time to actually visit each other and rehearse together. So we would send notes like, hey, I need your backups here. Uh, I'm going to be yeah. doing this and this part, blah, blah, blah. And I would send the guys videos of like me playing the chorus, and then nice. I'd be like, what harmonies are you doing here, okay. blah, blah, blah. So you kind of did get a little prep. But not a real official rehearsal, but yeah. like that feeling of us, the five of us on stage, like having each other's back. There's a few slip ups, so of good. course, yeah. because you know. 15 years without performing together, it's like you're not going to be perfect. But like, even if you do, the vibe of still it, slip ups. The vibe of it was like, one of the best feelings, best shows. Yeah. Um, and it, I love playing by myself too, though, because yeah. I, I only have myself to rely on. Um, That's the dope way of looking at it. Yeah. I just like, if the butterflies get to me, yeah. just a little, like I always get that like stomach feeling, but if it like becomes like too much, mm -hmm. then it's hard for me to like realize that I just need to trust like the gaps, of, like the breaths that I have, because you know what that is like. You know yeah. exactly where those breaths are, and as yeah. long as you just like have faith in them, you're gonna be able to like. You just kind of get into your head too much. Remember when I was saying like ten years ago, I had like tried to fit too many words in. It was like I never found a breath. That's that was my problem. Is like I never Can't took perform this. moments to breathe, so everything sounded really forced and try hard. Oh, it was too bad, but yeah, yeah, yeah my shit is terrible. Oh my god, what uh, what do you have? in the works uh for music and shit yeah. or just well you know what i'm taking it how i get it if i i'm trying to do as many shows as i can now because i got the merch game up mm -hmm. i'm investing as much as i can into shows that i can be at like how did that tony Ayo show go i was in mexico uh, our okay. evolution yeah. like robbie g hooked me up and that guy is killing it right now dude he's just did a, he's doing a fucking 60 show tour with yeah. fucking uh bad child how do you know Robbie G? Um, I think I met him on the Snack the Ripper tour, or maybe even before that. But just like through doing shows, the right. same way we met, you know. Like, right. But I don't think I've ever met him. We chatted on the internet a couple times. He just asked me about like shows in Calgary and who does shows and whatnot. But that's the extent of our conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I don't know no him. It's just through passing and stuff. But uh, the show was pretty dope and. Um, Got to set up the merch table and like I, my whole thing is is that I'm just trying to do as many like there was a time where I was like oh I thought I did a lot and I was like I don't want to open for people anymore and I'm like dude and I like got nothing because I wasn't like really trying for myself and so now I'm like you know what I'm gonna try and do as many shows as I can on my own and then as many op openers as I can because they're gonna have way more people there to help me sell my merch and try to do as many music videos as I can. Like, I'm not working out as hard as I should, and I want to uh, <clears throat> get a lot of content through the podcast, music videos, and singles. And Like, I'm trying to do fucking everything I possibly can that's humanly possible with the time I have working. Like, I, I'm in a great situation, too, though, actually. I work four days a week, so I have the next three days off. The nice. place is super close. Nice. Stays good. It could be a career. I'm not probably not going to do it because I want to do this. Mm -hmm. But um, the next thing I have is just the new song I'm writing. I got like Hellcap on the way. 
um, song about my dad, like, passing in the car we bought, and just random shit, and then I have this one that I was going to show you that probably after, after okay. that or whatever, but, um, what, I was going to ask you about your new music video, but you aren't going to say nothing about it. <laughs> I just, I have, I'm literally, I'm literally trying to do as just much. Like passive aggressively, let's talk about your new music video. Yeah, no, 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 but, I can um, talk about it. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to be rude and just talk about my shit, so I got to ask you about yours, but I'm just trying to, like, be as productive as possible. That's my answer. Is like whatever I can do to get as most content I can out that doesn't make me like I don't want to be like forcing shit out that I don't like. And this is something I like. Like it's entertaining to me to watch, and so like I want to do it. I want to learn how to talk to people, yeah. help people out. If I if I'm not gonna fucking be this big person, then it'd be cool if I could just be like this like platform for people to come onto and we could chat and just you know. So my whole goal is just to be. Just to create. As I like as I like having conversations with musicians. I don't know if you know this, but like I I like going on podcasts. I, I don't get invited onto them often enough, but I like having conversations with people who like music. Last one I was on was in like October with like this record store called Funky Moose Records in Saskatoon. No, they're in that area. I don't remember the exact location. Anyway, we just talked about music for like an hour and a half or whatever. It was awesome. And. I just like talking to people about music. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I feel so, like, uh, uninformed on a lot of music. Like, you asked me about the Bus Ram song or certain things, and, like, I have, like, more of, like, a visual memory than, like, the names yeah. and a lot of stuff. And it was probably because I was so into ICP that I was, like, fuck <laughs> everything else for so long that I was, like, I'm kind of, like, the last, like, five to ten years, I was probably, like, once I started rapping, like, heavily, I was, like, Starting to get into like other shit, but I was like, whoop whoop, everywhere I went, like I was just like, yo, like I'm gonna be following Jane ICP for fucking hell. What it is? Do you see my status I posted about not listening, having listened to Notorious B.I.G.'s Life After Death or Jay Z's oh, Out, and yeah. like some people like lost Pretty their minds. Yeah. And that was I. I kind of did it as an experiment because like I'm not. I've been like a huge rap fan since the early '90s, like. I've, oh, you're I, testing I, them. And like, oh, so what do you actually know? <laughs> yeah, so I, like, I listen to a lot of rap. I have a lot of like underground West Coast albums, I will say. Like, I, I was more into the West Coast stuff, um, like Bay Area stuff, like Tupac and uh, RBL Posse, Spice One, and Ice Cube, those guys. More, of the, more so than like the Jay Z and Notorious B.I.G. stuff. Yeah. But, like, there's so much music out there. And it's impossible to listen to everything. Oh yeah, totally. And you gotta take a lot of time in your life to be like. So when you say like, I grew up as a, I loved ICP, and that's all I was kind of, I was just all about ICP. Oh, whatever. Please. And like, I did like, I liked ICP too, and for a bit, I can't bro. say I was ever. I know I saw that. <laughs> this is my first tattoo. I, bro. I can't say I was ever a juggalo. Me and my mom I, cried, but uh, <laughs> like, as soon as she seen it, cry. But it's <laughs> funny because like. Man, the amount of music that is out there that I haven't heard yet yeah. is like unreal. Even though I've listened to so much good music in my in my lifetime, and like I've explored lots of good music, the amount that of good music that I haven't heard, like un, like local or famous, yeah. I will never catch up. No. I will never hear it all. And so like, whenever you're kind of like, ah, no one's listening to my music. It's kind of like you're literally a drop of water in the ocean. So it's like yeah, as long as you are loving what you're doing, yeah. and That's so many people, that. so many people have this argument like, "Well, you can't just make music for yourself." I'm like, "You have to make music for yourself. You well, have to enjoy it. Well, it'll last. You won't last. What else? What? Who else is gonna like it if you don't? Yeah. Or any anything in life. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be a fucking Marathon runner if I ain't running, you know, like, just, right. it's just how it is. And you're not going to accomplish fucking certain things and things you think you like if you don't actually fucking love it. Yeah, you yeah. have to enjoy it before you can win the race. 100%. And, um, you have but... to be a fool before you're a master. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Yeah. I had to be a fool before I was a master. So you brought up my new video, and I will talk about it a little bit. Demons not... and Liars? No, the next one. Okay, but, but Demons and Liars was... Footage from the live show I was just talking about. 
Okay, and if you guys haven't viewed, go check out on YouTube, Demons and Liars. Is it up on Spotify as well? That's on, yeah, it's on our album, it's so okay, it's so uh, totally up, everything you know. It's out everywhere, it. the video's on YouTube. Demons yeah. and Liars, King Dylan, check it out. But yeah, the next of the video? DC show. Or, of the DC show, sorry, but, but, pardon it? The song is by the DC show, that's all The I'm song is by the DC show, pardon me, it was the group that he's in. And uh, it's fucking amazing. You guys gotta go check it out. I've listened to it like three times a day. It's fucking dope. Um, I did post on Facebook that like that song is actually like really rooted in my soul, even though it's like just a to superficially it might just seem like all oh, these guys are just rapping about how good they are at rapping, whatever. But it actually is more deep than that. Like it's about like how. Music. Everything we've talked about so far, like how you can lose sleep over like what we've talked about of like, oh man, am I good enough? Is, is my voice good enough? Do people not like me? Am, I, am I beefing with know. someone right now without yeah. even knowing it? Like, oh, or do weird. people just not like me for some not unknown reason, whatever? So like, demons and liars are those demons in your head that like tell you that like someone doesn't like you. Like someone is talking shit about you right now and you're like, what? Who's talking shit? I'm the anyway, shit. That's so, dope, I've worked so hard at this, like people need to like, know. This. Someone's someone's lying, like they're why would why would I be talking shit? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so that's with, the song means a lot because it's basically like how I've felt in the music industry for twenty some years or whatever. So anyway, Dog, that's impressive, man. I love that you say that. It's so dope, man. Like you know, we're not fucking branch off our music, but just to say that you've been sticking it out is just yeah. Every time. It's impressive, man. I respect that. So, 100%. Hats off to you. Seeing you live has just been a treat, man. I appreciate you noticing some of my bars, though, because no one ever talks about my rap bars. Everyone talks I'm about I'm a rapper, rap. though. I know. But people are like, oh, I like your video. I like your singing. Oh, you did a song, uh, like, about dinosaurs. And I'm, not, and I'm, like, just <laughs> on the top of the layer. Like, I haven't really dialed in, so that even fucking pisses me off more because I'm, like, I'm just going across the top for the interview and because I've seen you live. And every time you release something, I watch it and I like show you support and I like am interested because like when I see you live, that that's the most important thing to me is live performance. And when I yeah. see that, I'm just like, that's when you get me. Yeah. So I'm just like fan forever, man. And, like totally, I'm just skimming the top though. Wait till I'm really in there. I'll analyze the other boys' bars and shit and really go in on it. And like that's like just the top that you see, man. So like that song was like <laughs> when we recorded it, which is like 2020. Uh, and it had been a while since we had all recorded together when we recorded that song, but everyone on that song had like leveled up. And that's what like maybe another reason why I loved it so much, because like when everyone came and wrote, recorded their verse, I was like, oh. I was like, shit dude, like how did you get this good? Dope, there was a couple, there's a couple lines in the last verse, the dude, he's like, uh, um, I'm leaving this planet, so I'm going to be taking up sp space. Uh, I'm getting closer to the light, so now I'm throwing out shade or something like that. Yeah. Because, like, like bars. The, more, the more I'm close, bars. the more I'm closer to the light, the more I'm, yeah, fuck, what is the line? The more, the closer I get to the But it's like the, the double unconscious shade. shade. Yeah. So anyway, he has a couple of sweet lines in there. I and love I'm those lines. Like, where did this come from? Because most of the time he's just like, flows, whatever. Yeah. Silly shit. Silly fucking, I'm gonna rap about robots stuff. Yeah, or just whatever, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. not, not like that bar shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, um, wordplay. So, like, oh, man, I gotta, I gotta write a really good verse. And you had stuff. that bar, dude, the one that, like, was listening to fucking, I can't remember, but it was like that, it reminded me of the battle shit. I was like, fuck, I wanna start doing this shit that means more than just what I'm actually saying. Yeah. You know, but it, like, takes a long time, I think. Or it comes naturally to some people, but to me, it would take a long time because I have to, like, reference a lot of things and yeah the, i think my the bar i was like proudest of where i was like uh i'm too original i'm putting lead to your face and i'm sketching you like a criminal before you had your weapon drawn so yeah. i'm like putting the lead of a pencil to your face but i'm also putting like the lead that's I'm sketching you like a criminal because of the mugshot before you even had your weapon drawn but also like drawn oh. you know what i always <laughs> want to have is like have rappers come in here and like what that other podcaster interviewer does, he's like, explain your lyrics. Bar like, breakdown. Yeah, bro, I love that because it's like, when you listen to Tech Nine or Eminem or someone who's just like, 
going crazy or, eat, or just anybody yeah. in general, you don't really know them. You don't really know that unless, you know, some bars you'll catch and then yeah. a lot of them will go over their head and Travis Bowen, he's got a lot to go over my head and then he explains to me, he's like, haters on our dick, that's what we call hood. You get, you get it? Like the abbreviation, H-O-O-D, haters on our dick. Jesus. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like just the little things like that. And I was like, and I, I never got that until he told me. And I was like, oh. He's like, that that's cool. sometimes takes an explanation, but once you hear it, you're like, Jesus. Oh, it's self-titled. Yeah, Stabs crazy. you in the leg with a shovel. Let's have a shindig. <laughs> Everyone, every time I tell anybody about that, they laugh so hard. Oh, uh, that's so Is that great. a shindig? What? That's I love oh it. man, like, what, did that come easy, or did that was that just like they're taking their time? One of my buddies, oh. actually, the guy who said the line, I just tried to quote but failed that. He's like, we should do like a, a breakdown of our songs because like there's so many that each of us have missed, and if we have like a conversation about it and explain things that you think people have missed, whatever, you like. Anyway, I, mean, yeah, I had this one line on one of my previous albums, and this is what triggered him to say that, and I was like. Uh, I make Christians bail like Pat Bateman. Have you ever seen American Psycho? Yeah. Oh, Pat Bateman, yeah. Dude, that I made Christians my wife's bleed. Movie. Like, I, I don't, like, fucking Christians are scared of me. Like, Pat okay. Bateman. I make Christians bail. Oh, <laughs> sick. See, I'm just like, you have to explain it to me. <laughs> Christian <laughs> bail. Like like Pat Bateman. Bateman. It's right way over my head. Anyway. This guy's like, hey, pass me that, uh, Henway. Pass me that Henway. Pass me the Henway. What's a Henway? Three pounds. No, but he said it to you like six times, and I'm like, I'm stupid. <laughs> I like, don't know. Like, especially with the bar shit, this guy. Yo, do you like Pat's Day? I do. Do, do you like Battle Rap? I do. He's my favorite Battle Rapper. Rest in peace. I just had to say that. He is my favorite Battle Rapper because he has a great way of having that real, like, Top tier level battle rap shit, but it's really easy to understand. Compliment battles. Bro, we watch oh, these dude, battles. it's hilarious, man. Yeah. But I just I had to mention the battle shit because, in light of those couple of bars you mentioned, like they're just kind of like yeah thought out a little I, more. I I did really enjoy watching him and a bunch of lots of others on KOTD. I didn't watch all of them, but like there was a few select dudes who I was like, man, this is unreal. This is like top tier, like double entendre, triple entendre stuff. Do you have like a battle rapper that stands out to you? Like, that's like, or do you watch battle rap lots? Or? I haven't watched it in a long time, not yeah. gonna lie. But yeah, I haven't I would watched say, it in a minute either. I mean, I, want, I really wanted to watch that beef movie. Did you ever go to a KOTD? Uh, I did. Like, rap battle? I think I had distillery. Yeah. Distillery back in the day. I can't remember who's battling. Crackle? No. I know Crackle though. Every time I go to one, he's always there, like hosting or power or something. Um. Yeah. No, I I watched them all on you. I shouldn't say all. I watched a lot of them on YouTube, and we went to a couple events. And I know everyone there. It's just I don't think they really know me or what I do. They're like, hey, it's Kate Millen, but like, I've never checked out my stuff. They don't, I don't know. So they're missing out. They're missing out, son. Yeah. Well, that's the feeling I think in my head, right? It's those, a lot demons, of egos, it's those demons a lot in my of head that are talking to me like, they never listen to me, those pieces <laughs> of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. Fuck, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm always like, fuck, man. I'm just not there yet. Like, yeah. I'm just not, like, I, I don't know. I always tell myself self something different every time, but it's, so funny it's a battle, me. buddy. Uh, hey, where like do you sell your merchandise personally? Do you have a website? Like where can people reach you if they wanna buy your dope ass uh King comic Dylan. book your King King Dylan dot com? Yeah, so I dot, dot CA? No, dot okay. com. King Dylan dot com. com. It's got vinyl, got uh, I have USB sticks. Dude with King Dylan and they're actually bottle openers as well. Yo, um, CDs, of course, if anyone still has a CD. Yeah, I got, I got, I got stacks, dude. If you see those, see those bins there? I got, like, stacks of Seriously? CDs at home. Bro, you know what's dope? Yeah. Travis Owen saw your CD in the mall today and took a picture of it and sent it to me. It's a local artist. Nice. And, the, and I was like, fuck, why don't I have a CD in there? <laughs> you know, like, okay. like, I, I should have a, I should have a record in there, too. But so it's probably in the vinyl section. Make sure everybody checks that out, www.kingdylan.com. Yeah, that's D-Y-L-A-N, not D-I-L-L-O-N. Thank you. D-Y-L-A-N, like, like Bob Dylan. People, like Dylan. 
People think my name is Chipotle D. <laughs> God, I'm dead ass. Chipotle? I can only find Chipotle. It's fucking capital. Chipotle. I almost want to change it just to Cap D. Because of that. Like, it's C-A-P-D. Like, if you can't find that... Oh, man. God damn it. You know how many people call me Dylan? Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have a show coming up? I do not. Just uh, just been working on the videos and stuff. We should do a show. We should do a show. 100% all open for you. Sorry, you got the band. I lied. I have a show in Drumheller in the summer. But Yo, that's all paleontologist just land. No, that's all I can say. I, really, no. I just realized it hasn't been announced yet. Oh, fuck. You didn't say the date yet, though. I didn't. You're right. Yeah. But we know, we know, you know. Yeah. Fucking Jay McClain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, yeah, I've just been working on this one video that I haven't released yet for like four months, maybe even longer. Really? Time. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it was shot entirely with green screen. Sick. So everything, oh, that's right. Everything you see is going to be like visual effects. So, and it took me a long time. And it's a song about, I can't tell you. You look down at the beer can, no. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is about good times, I'll it's tell good, you that much. Good times? <laughs> Dude. Uh, what was your most memorable show? If you have one, like your most bad, like where you thought the fucking sound was great and the crowd was dope and it was just the best time you ever had. So, <clears throat> there is one. So back in 2013, I was invited to play at an arena in Grand Prairie. It's called Crystal Center. And uh, do you remember? Do you remember Wee Day? Do you remember hearing it about the controversy about Wee Day? Like weed day or weed, weed. day? Oh, As in like, no. it's like a. I don't fucking pay attention to politics. I can barely remember the dates. <laughs> any of the, any of this shit is like not ICP or rap or like what I'm doing at the time. Like literally, I could say it like even like if like you look at who I was even back then, I'm just so into my world and so mentioned some outside of it. I'm like, oh, I feel yeah. like I should read a book. <laughs> so sorry. This show came about as like my rock band was like dwindling into I I had already quit as I got the arena. Yes. So this uh I'd already quit the band. Um I made a lot of connections in that in that band, me personally as well as in the band, but I'd like kept in touch with lots of the people who I made connections with. Oh of course. And uh um they had this show called Mighty Peace Day, which is like an event for kids. It's an all day event in an arena. Basically like you have like famous celebrities, like athletes, musicians, and like motivational speakers oh, come to like talk to kids and whatever. But this one was like a smaller scale version of the bigger ones that travel around like North America and like London and stuff. So this one was a smaller scale one called Mighty Peace Day. So they had like um, Katrina LeMaydon, who's like a uh, Olympic speed skater. They had oh, Sean I bet you're drooling. Sean you're like, Desmond. I just want to fucking race you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I actually did have a conversation with her. I was like, I used to speed skate. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't. Sorry, she's, I didn't know. Like, I heard she's not a bitch. I didn't yeah. mean to call her the B word. That's not. I'm sorry, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. Um, I don't mean it in a bad way. But yeah, even though it's bad. Yeah. Anyways, you're there. Yeah. There's a bunch. Of yeah, there was a bunch of musicians. So there's like Emerson Drive, who's like a country band. There's uh, King Dylan, Sean Desmond. No, not King Dylan yet. No, but uh, a couple other bands and like someone in my band knew one of the organizers of this event, and they had asked Broken Ride, my former band, to play. But they were basically defunct and they didn't exist. But they had agreed to play. Oh, they had said, yes, we would love to play. Up. And, like, so this photographer who, like, is a professional photographer who had shot our album cover and stuff and charged just a whole bunch of money, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but she's, like, a very well known photographer in, like, Vancouver and North Alberta. Anyway, she messaged me. She's like, hey, I heard you were playing this show. And I'm like, Actually, I quit the band, so I have no idea what you're talking about. So I messaged my buddy, who is I'm still friends with, and I'm like, hey, are you guys playing this show? And he's like, yeah, we agreed to it, but we, we don't have, a, like, we're not a band anymore, so probably not. So I messaged the photographer, and I was like, 
maybe I can play this show. And so, like, I sneak, snuck my way in there Sick. because, like, the band had broken up, and I'm like, well, I want to play. Yo, you, and it was, like, an arena of, like, 4,500 kids. What? And, like, Yo. it was a full-on stage production, and I was oh, like, wow, cream. And this is, like, dream come true, right? Yeah. Like, I drove up there, I, I, was, I had just started a new job, literally, like, two weeks before that, and I'm like, hey... I need this day off. I've done it this so many times. It was in the middle of a week. It was like a Tuesday. And I'm like, if I leave Monday, I can get there. Like, if I leave Monday right after work, I can get there Monday night, play the show Tuesday, drive home Tuesday night, and be back for Wednesday. I'm like, I only need to miss Tuesday. <laughs> Even though it hasn't been 90 days. <laughs> Give me this month. Yeah, Monday. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I basically told my boss, I'm like, I'm playing this show. If you have to fire me, um, it's whatever. Like, He's like, okay, whatever. We'll go play the show. That's so dope. I still work at this place. That's anyway. awesome, dude. Shout um, out to the bosses that are dope and yeah. this guy's boss. But shout out to you, man. Anyway, I drove up there by myself because I originally like, hey, come with me. Come play. We'll play the show. He's like, I'm busy. I have to work. I'm like, okay, fine. So I drove up by myself. Where did you head at? Played <laughs> the show by myself. Like, it was the most surreal experience because played second and then I played again later in the day and I played Sick. so I went on stage as like the first musician and like the organizers were like oh, who is this guy and they started taking video whatever like everyone like by the time I finished Sick, my song bro. the kids were like what yeah and I'm like awesome, this is man. insane like no you guys don't know me and I was just yeah. super stoked to be there and like by the time I went on the second time they were like, well, you heard from this guy earlier. And they announced me like, who oh, coming up on stage again? It's getting done. And everyone was like, ah! Before yeah. I even got up on stage, I was like, what is going on? And like, even talking about it now, I feel like a little, some That's chills. Awesome, dude. But backstage, I was like, what is life right now? Like, yeah. I've never had 4,000 kids screaming for me. to change in ever. Day, and I remember like, everything's going to change now. But you know what I'm saying though, but like that feeling was probably so motivating. You know, it like, was. You know, like, like I did kind of like kick my ass into gear in a lot of ways. Like I still had everything to learn about the music business and I still, yeah. like I'm back to where I was because yeah. everything's changed in 10 years, right? And just it feels like as you grow, like uh, you uh, get to that next step, like level up, like you're saying, your boys in the DC, just leveling up each verse, every song. You're kind of just starting over at a yeah. new plateau. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Like, yeah. I feel like I was like, oh, I did all this shit. It should be here. And then I'm like, actually, no, I'm like starting over again in a different way. Yeah. And you're always kind of recreating. You're always learning. Yeah. I feel like someone who's like thinks they know everything. It's not gonna be. even even the richest, most successful people learn it every day. You know? Right. Because so, there was like way more successful people than me than me that were there. And I'm like, holy shit. And they were. Miles ahead of what I was doing. But you're killing their shit. <laughs> you're right. And like, they let me set up a merch table, which yeah. is the most insane thing. Yeah. Because like, I had a lineup of kids for like an hour. Yo. Like, gross. looking to buy my shit. Like, I sold out of all my stuff, signed out, signed a hundred autographs. And they're like, the thing I'll never forget is this girl who's like, like, just a girl, like a little kid. I'm like, I've never... They never. They don't know me. They're like, oh my god, I get to meet you. I'm like, you don't know me. Why? Do you, like, in my head, I'm laughing. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, you're crazy. You don't know me. They love your setup. <laughs> and they, and you know what I'm saying though. Like, like you don't. Yeah. Why are you so excited for someone you just learned about? Yeah. And like, oh, I'm just because I'm on a stage. You did good though. Just because I'm on a stage though, people are like Maybe. drawn to flashing Maybe. lights. Yeah, that's and a this part is, of it. This yeah. is the dark side of it because like. After the show was done, and I like got in my car by myself, this like shitty Mazda Protege 2002, whatever. Got in my car by myself, and I had to drive eight mean? hours through the night from yeah. Grand Prairie to Calgary. Yeah. Was it nine hours? Oh my god! Like by myself, I'm like, this is so depressing because I have no one to share it with. Oh uh, yeah. Like none of my friends are here. No one I am close with knows what I just went through. You know what the best thing about this podcast is? Some people are going to know. You know, it's good to talk about that shit. And it's like, it is sad in a sense, because I feel the same way, because 
I've had people be there with me and fade off, and I'm like, dude, I'm starting over. I feel like nobody gives a shit, yeah. and you're going to be like that for a long time. And even when you do, then maybe they'll just say, like, oh, yeah, it's overnight, or it's like, is it, like or just, I don't know, like, it's got somewhere, like, you know, like, they don't, like, really appreciate it. And it's like, mm-hmm. and being, feeling alone is, like, is the journey, man. It's just the yeah. hardest part about it, because everyone probably is, like, like you said, the guy said, no, I got to work, or... People yeah. might not want to be there just to hold a camera or like be there and pitch on gas. Like, you know, it's good to have mm-hmm. someone like that. And But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, most people don't. And you just kind of like riding it out. Uh, well, I remember because like, at, like I said, I started a new job. So I was literally at the bottom of the totem pole back then. And I got to work the next morning, like eight in the morning. And I was like, no sleep. First thing I had to do was like shovel some shit off the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, what just, this is the group. Craziest dichotomy of right. like you had a high emotional yeah. things. I'm like, oh, I just had four thousand people screaming my name, and now I have a boss telling me to go shovel shit off. Of Bro, the parking yeah. lot. it was like, yo, you should have seen me <laughs> last night. Yo, I actually even. Oh, I don't even want to say that. Actually, I was at work, and the guy's like, yo, can you even do this? And I just was like, I'm fucking better than everybody in this place. Like, not like that, but like, yeah. what can I do this? Like, what, like. To the point where, like, you've been at a high, and then so you're at a low, and your boss, like, looking down on you, and you're like, dude, I rocked a show in front of 4,500 people. What have you done with your life? No, like, in a sense, like, I didn't make money. I'm not the boss. But, like you said, you were there, and you saw it, so maybe that's, yeah. It's so great. It's it crazy that, I, like, I went to such a low, though. Like, I shouldn't have yeah. let it get to me, but I did. And that, I, like, I went to, like, a serious low, and, like... Because I didn't, wasn't able to line anything up after that, like immediately, like in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm set now because I met all these crazy cool people. I like met Sean Desmond and his manager and like this record label person yeah. who was they, there. Oh, like, I didn't I know that. all these people oh, wow. here who were there and uh, they gave me their card and I'm like trying to reach out to them. No. But nothing. So I'm just kind of like sinking deeper and deeper and I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm really, really right. back to square one and yeah. like. It's like, I, understand that. I don't know if you do drugs. I don't do drugs, but from what I Wait. hear. And I dabbled in ecstasy. Never sniffed coke, never smoked crack, never. My dad and my brother are super into hard drugs. Yeah. I like really hardcore into weed and alcohol. Yeah. Not, not hardcore into alcohol, yeah. but it's like a social thing. But weed, way too much. Yeah. But that's a drug, and I don't want to admit it is, but that's the one drug that is my vice for my, sure. My, my main comparison was could be like cocaine and heroin, which I've never done. But almost every fucking person I know does. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like they're either probably scared, which is heroin, or fucking sniffing coke. <laughs> it is fucking heroin, dude. They're like, oh, it's not. No, you're just not shooting your arm. You're popping a pill. It's still fucking heroin. It's synthetic. I'm not judging. I love all, like, I have a lot of friends that are, but yeah, my answer to that is like, no, but yes, because, but you like, know, like, in a sense. When you do bad. drugs, it like, totally fucks with your brain to the point where you can never reach that high again, right? You, you get that high, but you're always chasing that initial one. Yeah. And that's how I was kind of like, thought I was feeling with this show. And it's I'm like, like, oh. like yeah. just the whole phone yeah, and yeah. social media and fame and shit. That initial high that I felt on that stage, I've been chasing for like 10 years. And I'm like, it will come back. At this point, at it this point I'm kind of like, whatever. To be fair, I did go play that event again, um, and I brought my boys with me the second time, Sick. Um, and we had excuse me an amazing time. And then I played it a third time, which was like probably a mistake, but whatever. Word, dude. Well, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I love, I love the group. Uh, I want to have the group one day on the podcast if that was ever possible. I was thinking about it today, and I was like, well, if they ever wanted to, they're more than welcome. I'd love to get to know them. You're going to get a whole bunch of people talking over each other. Yeah, that's okay. Because I was like, I need to buy three more mics and three more cameras. That's literally what I said. I have one more sure mic, and then I have the mic that I record on. And then, like, I am going to buy more cameras. And once it's set up in the garage, I'm going to have, like, a huge, like, it's going to be sick. Like, there's going to be way more spots, and it's going to be better. It's going to be set up a a lot better, and I have more people on here. And I kind of want to have, like, a co-host or something, you know, like, someone who can sit there and help me because... Dude, you killed it tonight, by the way. Like, I feel like, 
a lot of the shit, like you took over half of this interview and had. I told you I like to part. talk about music. And no, I, just, I like to talk to people about music. No, man, you I'm, I'm just as like curious. I've thought about having a podcast before. It's just I think I'm like I could never logistically consider like set this all up. I don't have the space for it. For one, I live in a small yeah, condo. Neither do I. What? You have more than I do. <laughs> Okay, okay, well, I th- like, I thought I had, yeah, no, well, okay, I got you. <laughs> but, oh, you should, uh, man, I wish I could, if you, if you ever come over to my place and see my, like, little studio set up and, like, how, I don't know how I've been able to get away with shooting videos at my place, but Creative. somehow it's, like, creativity to work, right? Like, my wall is probably from this sign to your pole there. Yeah, well, I'm, like I like said, dude, right? Right. And I have all your furniture in there. I'll probably like, you probably have to take a piss by now. I don't know, but if you do, if you check out the bathroom in the back or the like the bedroom, it's fucking the back door is like my house was built in 1912, like I said earlier, and it's so tiny. And I like I have just enough room. If there's more people, like you only really need a light and a camera point at the person. You don't have to be in this setup, right? You could be like over there on the couch or. I could be in front of the computer. Yeah. It's nice to like look at the person. I think in the new setup, I'm gonna have like a table. I actually can, like directly at each other. I actually thought about this idea. I was like, not your typical like podcast. I was gonna have like, let's cook together. Let's cook a That's meal together. Sick. We'll fucking give everyone the recipe as yeah. we like go along, and then we'll chat as we're either cooking or as we're eating. Sick. And I think that would be an interesting Yo. premise. Don't Please. steal that idea. Whoever's out there, well, I'm going to use this. And if you steal it, if I see someone doing this, dog. you're getting the diss track, dog. Uh, Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Dog. Yeah, with, okay. with, with their name. Or what's their name? Yeah, I was going to say, but they're cooking like weed shit. Are they cooking weed stuff? Uh-huh. Or is it just hot? Like, There's a weed show now, too, where they're like cooking weed edibles. Yeah. I think I would fo- focus more on like the, the interview, though, and like just enjoying a good meal. Yeah. And you kind of like come up with a uh, conversation. Uh, while you're doing something, so you're distracted and it's not like forced. That's right. You know, I felt like at uh, the start it was not so much forced, but we're kind of like, oh, this is really barely know each other. Just kind of learn how to talk in front of these cameras, all these lights, and then it kind of got dope. That's like, right. you know, after a while we didn't have anything to do, but it took so if you're still time. watching at this point. Yeah. God Thank you. Wants. And I don't mean to cut us out. We've been over it. We actually hit the record over two hours. I think we're at. Uh, uh, King Dylan, go check his shit out. www.kingdylan.com. He's got vinyls, he's got comic books, he's got a show coming up. We're not going to say when it was. If you watched, you might have an idea. But I just want to thank everybody for tuning into the Pyramid Podcast. It's episode five. We're going to upload it to YouTube. It was live. Um, Thanks for having me. Dude, let's, it was an honor. Let's say that. We're, we're going to have you back 100%. I can hear my dog crying in the background. Oh no, so but, sad. Do you hear that? Feel it. No, it's probably my dog back at home. That's how loud she is when she cries. <laughs> I was like, did you leave your dog in the car? <laughs> no, she's at home. Okay, I love you guys. Uh, King Dylan, episode five. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Bam, 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 bam. And we're still live because I have to go over here. I have to pee so bad. It's like two hours is my pee limit. Right? Like, if you don't have a host, hold on a second here. Thank you, guys. If you don't have a host,